Now, Thurus is back for Season 4 of Dragonflight Mythic Plus, and this guide offers a concise refresher on three things. Number one, it compiles all the tech and tricks still usable in Season 4, and if Blizzard fixes any of these in the future, I will note it in the pinned comments. For better clarity, I will reuse relevant footage from my previous 1 minute and plus tip videos. Number two, I will recap the most dangerous mob and boss mechanics of the dungeon that can break your key, as well as tips on how to handle them. This is based off running this dungeon countless times in Season 2 of Dragonflight. Any big changes or reworks to abilities from Season 2 will be highlighted as well for Season 4. This video is meant to be a refresher, not the usual in-depth masterclass guide on my channel for Mythic Plus. The masterclass guide you see for Neltheris on screen remains 99% relevant as Blizzard has only made minor adjustments to the dungeon. If you are entirely new to Neltheris, I recommend pausing this video, watching the masterclass guide first, link is in the description before you dive back into more advanced tech and tips for Season 4 in this video. Let's get started. The first tech to cover has got to do with these burning chains that people abused in the MDIs and on very high keys. In the past, you can pick up these chains, run them over the mobs and do massive damage and Blizzard has changed them massively for Season 4. It's still powerful, but instead of dealing damage now, the chains will stun the mobs for 5 seconds and it increased the amount of damage they will take by 50% for 5 seconds. So not as powerful, but still something you should abuse. You can see me picking it up here and then running it across the mob, stunning them for 5 seconds. So you can still do giga pulls around this, but in the past, you would tend to save your offensive cooldowns and just spam chains onto these big pulls to blow them up. Now you actually do need to commit offensive cooldowns when you're using the chains. So that tech is still usable. Next up is an oldie but goodie. You can still use multiple treasures and pick up multiple treasures for Warlord Saga. Let me explain. You can see I picked up the melee ability here, right? And then I'm off to pick up yet another treasure pile in order to you know, use two consecutively when the shield comes up. You can see as I dig through this treasure, it now changes to the one of negation, the range ability. Now I'm going to forward a little. All right, Magma Shield is coming up in three seconds. Magma Shield comes up. You can see what's happening here. I'm popping, firstly, the one of negation. So when you pick up the items and you use them, you start off with the latest item first and you start working towards the previous item. So I cast one of negation, which is the range ability. By the way, you can cast your abilities now while moving. One of negation has been used and you can see I can immediately recast the melee ability. You can see I'm channeling it here right now. And there you go. If you are so unlucky that the first item and the second item you pick up are the exact same one, you won't have two copies of that. You will only have one. So this trick and tech to pick up multiple items only work if the items that you picked up are differentiated ones, are different. If it's the same one, it counts as only one charge. By the way, that's the tech for this boss. It still works. And later on in this video, I'll cover the key changes to Warlord Saga. It was nerfed slightly. Well, maybe slightly is an understatement. It was nerfed moderately. We'll circle back to that later on. The other tech is basically the Kalashi Gulash. And this is something you can pick up after you beat Chargath. His door will open, you turn right, and you would basically see this pot. You can see me mouse overing this. And if you have a Dragonflight cooking level of plus 25 and above, you can actually click on this and you will get an extra action button. Using it will give your party a movement speed buff until they get into combat, which is great because Neltheris is underground, you can't mount, and there's quite a run from here until the room of the Forge Master boss. So you use this to save some time for your entire dungeon run. So that's all the tech. Let's cover where you can potentially break the key on Fortified and Tyrannical. This is a very common pull you set up. I'll forward here a little. So right off the bat, you do a big pull. And let me just cover what's important here. Firstly, if you're melee DPS, don't die to Volcanic Guard. Download my plater. There will be an alert that tells you front. Just get out of that. The other thing that tanks die to is this brutal strike from the Spine Crusher on Fortified Keys. This tank buster hurts. And generally, other than that, it doesn't really do much to the party. So as long as your tank can survive this, you can pull back. Next, you see this patrol with the Therma Touch. And this Therma Touch is probably the most problematic mob in the first area. You never ever want to do any pulls with more than two Therma Turges. They do two annoying abilities. The first, you got to kick with a Molten Core cast. They basically empower the ore elementals here. If it gets its cast off, it's disaster, it pulses damage, it's really annoying. Then the other ability you need to stop is a magma conflagration and you need to use a crowd control to stop it. Again, my plater profile basically signals that. It will tell you CC. So you gotta stop those two abilities from going off. The moment you kill the Therma Touch, the moment it's dead, you can chain in the rest of the mobs. You can see the moment it dies, I am going on to pull the rest of the mobs over here. Again, at any point in time, as long as you only have one Therma Touch, you are completely fine. You can see Magma Configuration going off and it's doing this pulsing big damage. 
So it's something that you need to watch for. This key is done on PTR, so it's not exactly a high key, it's just a part, but it already tells you the amount of damage that ability puts out, so just be very wary of that. Other than that, the mobs before the first boss room, there's really nothing you need to worry about. Just make sure you check the brutal strikes from the spine crushers, those are basically tank busters. And then you have the first boss, Magmata, is something that everyone fears. If you remember in season two, you are able to use or abuse this cheese, this item that you can pick up from the table to make this fight a lot easier. That is fixed by Blizzard, so don't use that. The idea is that you want to try and tank the boss relatively in the middle of the room so that it doesn't charge off to Narnia where you lose a lot of melee uptime. You can see the blazing charge about to go off. Generally, you want to bait it near to the walls. You know, baiting it all the way to the other side of the room is really bad. As a tank, there's something that you need to watch out for is also you don't want the boss to be standing in fire puddles. When the boss is standing in fire puddles, it gets buffed, so that's bad. Generally, you want to try and keep the boss relatively in the middle of the room and you bait it in a moderate distance to the wall. If you bait charges too close to the wall, you can't react to the waves in time. You bait it too far, you lose melee uptime. But generally, other than that, the other thing you need to watch out for is when the boss puts this dot on people, you see this dot? Alongside this lava spray it's about to do, this overlap is generally the most dangerous and you just need to be very careful when it's about to do lava spray and the dot is ticking. On tyrannical keys, heavy, heavy damage. Other than that, just need to know that as the fight goes on, it gets more stack of this buff and it deals a lot more damage. So it's kind of a soft enrage mechanic and that is why it's so important you don't bait those charges off to Narnia, that way you get the maximum DPS on the boss. Once you kill Magma Task, you'll fall down from his platform and then you'll pursue on to the other side of the dungeon. This is where we'll talk about one of the more annoying mobs, which is the hunter mobs. So these hunters that I pulled, technically you can skip it if you have some sort of shroud, etc. But the thing is, you want to try and avoid doing the hunters where possible. You can see this bleed, it puts on people, it hurts on fortified keys. So ideally where you can avoid doing hunters, you never ever want to do the hunter mobs. But sometimes in parks, it's just hard to coordinate, so we pulled them anyway. Moving past the hunters, you have the mini boss, Lahar. And naturally, again, if you can try and avoid pulling the hunters, you avoid pulling the hunters. But again, I'm in a park, so you know sometimes it's just safer to just pull the hunters, if not people but pull. Lahar doesn't really do much. You just need to kick the burning raw, and you should be fine. Move out the swirlies. Pretty easy. This is the part you generally want to pull big in dungeons because of the chains, right? You can see the chains that we talked about, the tech we covered. You can see just above my camera over here, this is basically the chains. But generally, these mobs we've already covered. The only other mob to talk about before we pull the boss is basically Bone Tender. It has a mending clay that needs to be kicked, so make sure you interrupt that. Beyond that, just move out the frontals of the Magma Fist for the trainees and you are good. And then we have the next boss, Chargaff. Chargaff has basically been tweaked by Blizzard for Season 4. It is now different from Season 2 to Season 4, let me explain. So chronologically, just note that Dragon Strike, it targets someone, it jumps at the person, it puts a nasty bleed on the person, just be very alert. Healer needs to spot heal this. And then you just need to dodge the frontal, which is Magma Wave. Now, the grounding spear mechanic, this one has some changes, and here's why. It's got to do with his fiery focus. You see this fiery focus? In the past, what fiery focus did was that it spawned this circle on the ground. And if you're in the circle near the hitbox of the boss, you will take damage from fiery focus. Now, fiery focus only targets the tank, which means that you can now run the chains exactly onto the hitbox without taking any damage. So technically, the tank should stay still at this point in time, let all the DPS run onto the boss, but because it's a part, nobody really kind of coordinates. So as a tank, I generally just help to bring the boss uh, to all the chains. The other thing you should know is that breaking the debuffs will cause different stacks of the dot. Like for example, in this case, we broke two chains instantly, right? And on tyrannical keys, this is pretty terrifying. You see two stacks of this dot, it hurts a lot. Now, there's a few ways to do this. Some people opt to pop big defensives throughout the entire party and break all three at once. It depends on the key level. All I'm saying is you got to gauge for yourself on tyrannical weeks, on high keys, the amount of damage you can tank. And if you're not certain, just let the debuff fall off before you break the next chain that you know applies the next kind of stack. So just be very careful about that. You also want to save all your DPS cooldowns. After you break the boss, you stun the boss, it takes 50% more damage. This is the point where you want to basically tunnel all your damage 
um, onto the boss. So that's basically the boss and it opens the door. No new mobs to talk about here after the boss, just know that you have the chains to the left of the screen that you should use to just stun all the mobs here. You're just very quickly demonstrating how the chain works. You basically pick up the chain and you just run it across everyone. It stuns everyone for five seconds and it's free damage. They take 50% more damage. So the next poll here, just know that this hunter, I'm pulling it in a park, but generally you should skip the hunters. Like I said, this is a very inefficient pull. You never ever want to do count with any hunters. Minimize hunter pulls, minimize thermaturges pulls in this entire dungeon. Those are mobs you don't want to do. Anyway, you hit up the stairs and you get this lava barrier and the flare. Now you need to kick the flare mobs. Um, and generally, if you have something like a Vengeance Demon Hunter, you can go ham here uh, with your silence sigils and whatnot and pull multiple flares. These things can be pretty scary, but as long as you have lockdowns, you're generally fine. So I'm just gonna forward over here. And then you have this mini boss. This mini boss is actually quite easy to do, but this was on the PTR. I wanted to test whether the skip through the mini boss still works. They haven't changed that, which is great. But technically on high keys, you can pull the mini boss. It's actually not that terrible to do. Um, you tag in the flares here and you can go for this iron torch pool as well. If you're a Vengeance Demon Hunter, if you're feeling adventurous and you have AOE lockdowns, you can do that. But if you are having a comm that doesn't have a lot of kicks, you probably want to play it safe a little. Lots of kicks going out here. Same thing over here. The bone splitter mobs will attempt to put this dragon bone axe on people. And you can see the paladin basically taking the brunt of the damage there. Anyway, you keep clearing onwards towards the forge master. So you come down the stairs and this monstrosity pack, usually in parks, you clear one side. Um, just take note the monstrosity does AoE damage. It's kind of annoying to deal with. Other than that, just kick the iron torches. And you will note that on the other side, there's a patrol as well. Generally, you don't need to do this at all in organized groups. But in parks, there's always someone who's trying to dodge the AoE on the boss. And then he stands here and he butt pulls these mobs and it's a wipe. So in parks, I generally just pull this patrol as well. But in coordinated groups, you don't want to do this pack. It's just not efficient. Anyway, you clear out the Forge Master area. Nothing much to talk about here. All right, before you pull Gorak, just know that this boss is probably the second hardest boss after Magma Task. Make sure everyone is kind of rested. You have your healer mana available before you pull. Um, there's a lot of AoE damage coming in here. So you just need to be very careful. This Might of the Forge actually does uh, quite a bit of AoE damage on high keys. So you just want to be very prepared for healing cooldowns at this point. This Blazing Aegis can be interrupted. Pretty sure the mage actually invis there to cancel. So uh, that's just a little nifty trick that you can do to cancel that. Anyway, Heated Swings is over here. As a tank, make sure you pop a cooldown where you take Heated Swings. He will then knock you back. Make sure you move out of the circle, else you get one shot when the boss lands. And other than that, it just rinses and repeats. Dash Forge Storm. Um, some form of swirlies on the ground, you need to dodge those one shot. And then he goes back and he does his AoE Pulse thing. And just to kind of talk about the next mechanic, the Blazing Ages, right, that we skipped earlier. So it's basically this thing just dodge swirly. It's not that hard. But it's really about planning uh, your cooldowns as a tank. At this point in time, make sure you have big cooldowns. Tank Buster cooldowns and then sleep out of it and you're good. If you don't have a leap, you can mobility out of that place, movement speed buff, all these helps. So once you kill Gorak, you want to basically go down the stairs, go across the room, and you will have these two mobs, right, on the second floor. Now in a park, I don't try this, but in an organized group, what you should do is you should tag these two lava bearers and fall off the ground here, make sure no one gets in combat with them. As a tank, just hold aggro on them. And then you proceed to pull the rest of the mobs here. And what happens is those mobs up top will snap back down to the first floor. That allows you to do a way bigger pull. There's not a lot of party damage at this point. Those blazing slashes are really on the tank. So you just need to watch um, as a tank that you have cooldowns and defensives. The Tempers is the only ability that is going to damage the party. And if nobody eats this frontal, this volcanic guard, there's really nothing to worry about. As a healer, just watch your tank. Then you have this Lava Manson and Warden. If you're feeling adventurous, technically you can chain pull the other uh, remaining three mobs. And all I'll say is that the Warden is the only thing to worry about as a tank because of the Tank Buster, the Blazing Slash. And if you do decide to chain pull, just know that there's two Wardens, right? So there's two Tank Buster mobs you need to worry about and uh, there's two Lava Mansers that you need to kick. So that's really the only thing you need to worry about. But if you're a Vengeance Demander or people have good lockdowns, you're generally okay. And then we come to Warlord Saga, the final boss. And this boss has been nerfed significantly. Now, firstly, in the past, when you pick up the treasure, let me forward here a little. You see me pick up the treasure here and I have only 30 seconds of the debuff. This curse used to be a five minute dot and it just takes away and it stacks. 
And if you do not have a curse dispel, oh man, you are in for a world of hurt because this thing will just keep ticking away and it's really annoying when you're trying to form a party for Neltheris and you need to look for a curse dispel. Now it's only 30 seconds. And like I covered earlier at the start of the video, you can actually pick up multiple items to use on Warlord Saga to break the shield. Another important thing to note about Season 4 is that they minimize the puddle sizes here. This dragon's eruption has been nerfed in terms of a 1 yard radius. Actually no, I think it's a 1.5 yard radius, so everything helps. The other thing that they changed for this boss is that they removed the Azir Stone of Might. Now this Azir Stone of Might was previously an item you can pick up in the treasure pile and it allows you to dash at the boss and damage the boss. It was a very bad item because you might dash into one of these swirlies and die. So they removed that in Season 4. So overall this boss has been nerfed. They made the puddles here easier to dodge while you're channeling your abilities. And as a tank, I always try and pick up two items. So you can see I have already one item, right? The melee one. And then I have another one that I'm picking up right now and it gives me my second ability. And you can tell because the indicator here has changed. And so when I use my first ability, which is targeted, you can see over here, I use the first one and then I have the second ability that shows now that I can use. Now, naturally, I'm taking two stacks of the curse, but as a tank, you should be A-OK. -okay. It only lasts for 30 seconds. If you cycle your big defensives, you should be okay. Save all your offensive cooldowns for this point in time. And just take note that the boss takes double damage during this downtime phase after you break the shield. So you always want to save your offensive cooldowns here. Can't stress that enough. Makes the fight a lot easier. Now, if you're able to do all that, generally Neltheris is a tricky dungeon because of Magma Task as well as the Forge Master. But if you can get through those bosses, generally the key is very timeable. Anyway, I hope this guide was helpful for Season 4. It hopefully it helps you time keys. If it was, make sure to subscribe to the channel. More Mythic Plus content coming your way. A big shout out to all the Patreon subscribers that you see on screen. Thank you so much for making our guides, our resources and UI profiles free for this community. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, the link is in the FAQ. Lastly, the video in the middle of the screen will be useful for you to prepare for Season 4 Dragonflight, so make sure to check that out. I will see you in the next video.